Coco Chanel once said, some people think luxury is the opposite of poverty. It isn't. It is the opposite of vulgarity. True luxury is defined by craftsmanship and design. Skill, investment of time and scarcity are the signatures here. And time is often said to be a luxury. Watches and timepieces have for the past 500 years helped define our conception of beauty. Chapek is the perfect modern example of this centuries-old tradition. This is their story. There is a unique relationship between man and time and it's something that has been there always, you know, even when you look at the old ancient Greek. Everything started with the dream of having your own watch brand. Chapek is a brand I was falling in love because it was just forgotten. There are certain standards in autologerie where you need to reach them if you want to belong to this sort of very small family. So we decided to go on a product of very good facture, of high quality. Où nous avons vraiment voulu faire le, le lien entre le passé et le, et le présent. Chapek is the expression of beauty through time measurement. It's how can I express beauty in a watch, if you want, very simply. Now we are in an age where everything changes. Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever came out. It's a new time, and it's also time to change the way people can access Swiss high-end watchmaking. And this is what we are doing. Now a lot of people are tired of big brands, big luxury brands that are everywhere. For me it's true luxury that it's just very rare because people cannot produce more. And they produce with all the care and all the expertise and, and all the passion they have. And this is for me true luxury. This is the real deal. This is true traditional watchmaking, true luxury, that really is quite unique in the way it's made. François Czapek was a Czech-born Polish watchmaker. In 1839, he founded Patek, Chapek and Company in Geneva, Switzerland with fellow Pole Antoine Patek. For six years they produced exceptional watches. In 1845 he founded Chapek and Company. His magnificent timepieces soon became popular and exquisite gifts in the most sumptuous European courts of the day. He was even purveyor to Emperor Napoleon III. At his height, Chapek had boutiques in Geneva, Warsaw, and Paris, Place Vendôme. Chapek is a brand I was falling in love because it was just forgotten. This was very interesting how they revived brands. This was, for me, very fascinating how you link the past to the present and from the present to the future. Then I found about Chapek, and I thought, wow, why nobody knows about Chapek? And then I started the research on the brand, and it was just a forgotten brand, a forgotten watchmaker and a forgotten personality. So and that was very interesting and challenging to bring this back to the to life. Well my name is Harry Harry Gould. And I'm not coming from the watch world, I'm coming from the art world. The first time I met the name Chapek was much earlier than 2013. And then you have a brand name, but that's not enough. Yeah, you need a good product, you need a very nice watch. And this took two years for creating one model only. I'm Xavier Roque Morel, I'm 46, and I'm the CEO of Chapek. It started with a meeting, an encounter, uh, between Harry and myself. Uh, Harry asked me to, to become the CEO. We became after two, we became three, with a watchmaker uh, joining us, and that's how Chapek uh, was revived. Alors je suis le, le X-Men dans, dans l'histoire, je suis horloger. En fait, Chapek, c'est la rencontre de, de trois hommes euh, totalement inattendus. J'évoquais justement ma passion pour les montres et euh, une envie de faire, de créer de mes propres mains. Et j'ai eu par, le, par Xavier et Harry cette possibilité 
de pouvoir m'investir avec euh, amour et passion pour un, pour un produit. There is a unique relationship between man and time and it's something that has been there always, you know. We see that mankind want to escape from time and at the same time is seduced by time. So there is this sort of love-hate relationship between mankind and time and I think that's the profound thing that is behind behind all this what's making uh, interest and what's making passion. When you think about Swiss, what comes in your mind? Chocolate <laughs> and watchmaking. And chocolate can be done almost anywhere, but watchmaking only in a few regions. And this has a history uh, of over 200 years. Everyone has set ground here in Le Locle, in Neuchâtel, in Chenet. And it's very convenient also if you go into the product development because everyone is in a proximity of half an hour or one hour, which is great. This is where great watches are born. In Switzerland, you had two things at the same time. On one side, you had Geneva with the Protestant law that uh, banned any kind of jewelry but authorized watchmaking. So there was a, a switch from jewelry to watchmaking in terms of investment of, of discretionary money. And on the other side, you had the Jura, where we are here today, where a lot of people were actually struggling in the winter because they have not enough activities, uh, the farmers, and they needed to make more money to survive. And so all these farms, they took each of them one work, one activity, one component. And from this poverty, they created wealth. It all started here in this place. It's actually quite funny to be here today together. Everything has been made here in the canton of Neuchâtel. Everything has been made in between five, six different providers that live here. Of course, the leather strap is an alligator. There is no alligator in this lake, so it's not coming from here. Okay, that's, a, that's one exception. But if you take the rest of the watch, everything is made in Switzerland. Now, how did this start? It started because when we were seated together, we said, okay, we're gonna relaunch the brand. There's no way we're gonna succeed because the business is made by five huge groups or independent because some are, are independent but they are still like a group, you know, they make above a billion euro sale. The only way to succeed is to share. There are a lot of other people like us who are watch lovers and they would love to be in our seats, you know. Why don't we share that seat with more people? And so that way we will access a market. We said, okay, we're gonna go and do crowdfunding equity. So the first thing that you have to, uh, to work on is on the concept of the watch and that defines your brief. From that, you have to work very closely, design and movement. They have to come together. You cannot have a design and then look for a movement. And I, or if you have a movement and have not integrated the design at the beginning, then suddenly the designer has a very small space to play with. And we didn't found the designer at the beginning. And surprisingly, what we, ha what we had at point number two, which was the movement maker and the design of the movement, came first. I'm Jean-François Mongeon. The collaboration of Chronos with uh, Chapek uh, is to develop the, the movement dedicated to Chapek with the DNA of Chapek. For the Chapek movement, uh, we took 18 months for the development and the prototypes. They were the perfect fit for us. They got the right size. They make small series. We want it to be in the range of 100 watches to maximum 1,000. And then they have acquired year after year a real savoir-faire in producing very well the components. They control a lot of the steps toward the finishing of the movement. And that's also what makes a difference because it's mechanical and it has to be extraordinarily controlled. We cannot produce a lot of these movements because it needs a lot of times, it needs also people. We need people very well trained for, for this kind of, of work. And they are rare also. And Jean-Francois found us very, very, very quickly a solution for the concept of what we had in mind. And he said, wow, you're looking for a designer. I know somebody. Alors, je m'appelle Antoine Chomi. 
j'ai un bureau design qui s'appelle Neodesis et dans ce contexte, j'ai rencontré la famille Xapec. Euh, les concepts se sont basés sur une montre historique qui existait, qui existe toujours, et on en a puisé l'ADN pour en faire une montre poignée. Et la montre poignée, c'est celle que vous allez voir bientôt. Aujourd'hui, on a renoué avec le passé et on a apporté ce qu'on estime être le meilleur du présent, avec un regard sur le futur. Donc dans le futur, on a déjà euh, des projets, des concepts qui vont vraiment loin. Mais il fallait un point de départ, qui est, enfin un deuxième point de départ, un renouveau qui est aujourd'hui. Pour l'inspiration, ce que nous voulons, c'est d'essayer de comprendre qui était Chapek, et quel était son style, et quelle était sa personnalité à travers son style. C'est comme nous avons découvert qu'il était vraiment en amour avec la beauté. En français, vous pouvez dire qu'il n'y a pas de beau banal. Il n'y a pas une beauté qui est tellement commune that uh, is evident for everybody. It has to be somewhere striking, unexpected. We looked at the way he was doing that, and he was doing that by breaking softly some codes. So he was using very long Roman numerals, much longer than any of the watchers at this moment. He was using a very fine forged hands, you know, with fleur de lis or with a trident or with shapes that other people were not using. He was putting the subdials in different places where usually people don't put them. And, and the watch, when you describe that, you should feel what, what would be the watch looking like. You know, it's all strange. And in the end, the watch is beautiful, super balanced. Everything needs to be a show on November 10, and not everything is ready. <laughs> so I don't know in what state I will be tomorrow. It's like a symphony. One person alone can't do much. I find that very, it's a very demanding environment. It's a very aspirational environment.